R. All right, welcome back, Sick of 365 Radio. Time to take a look at some stories from around the world of sports that uh, maybe aren't high priority per se. Maybe wouldn't even be mentioned if not for this segment. We've been talking about mental health with the Naomi Osaka story. I think we're all very understanding of, of her position, as we could be in her position, not really knowing it. But also, just rules are what they are. And their rules, their rules. But uh, mental health is something that needs to be spoken about. I've Going back to the old place that I uh, used to be at, used to speak on it uh, on occasion as well. And uh, Washington, the football team, has uh, taken a step in that direction. You talk about athletes and mental health. Well, the Washington football team wants uh, their team to know that mental health is important to them. That's why today they announced the hiring of Dr. Dr. Barbara Roberts, its first full-time director of wellness and clinical services. Now, they aren't the first one to uh, hire a wellness director, but it is not like a job that everybody has right now. And so perhaps this is something that becomes a new niche, you know, in organizations is a personal uh, health daily mental wellness uh, type of evaluator. Only seven teams currently have a position that's similar to this one, and she will be only the fourth full-time clinician with a PhD in psychology that works in the NFL. So uh, a trailblazer of sorts. Uh, Apparently, she's going to introduce daily mental wellness work for players as part of a program. Um, She talked a little bit about her focuses, but uh, apparently Ron Rivera has uh, really stressed the importance of mental health, and so he called her a tremendous resource for the franchise you know i i think this is gonna with the advent of social media it's it's uh because people i i think the you know if you were an athlete and you you know you fumble the ball and you know cost the team a game the hey you suck lasts until you get to your car right but once you're on twitter if you go on twitter if you do that if you're dumb enough to do i say dumb enough if you're but bold enough to go on Twitter after you've had a game like that. It's kind of dumb, too, and, and though, yeah, you're right. <laughs> but, like, I saw Des Bryant do it all the time. Yeah. I mean, I was there, like, I was there when he had his, like, most epic rant uh, after a game when he people said he was cheering for Ricardo Lockett's broken neck, which wasn't true and all that. When you do that, you are inviting, you're inviting kind of the demons into your mental health that you would, that didn't have before. Not to say that they weren't there, but, like, you're kind of throwing gasoline on the fire. So I'm not surprised that more teams aren't doing this. And then on just like outside of depression and anxiety and all the other things you could deal with, uh, you know, as a human being, you know, there's sometimes you get caught in your own head and you get up, upset or depressed or anxiety because the only thing that's really bothering you in your life is that you're not hitting the ball well enough or you can't catch all of a sudden or something that you were doing well your entire life, all of a sudden you can't do, you know, you can't run that route. The, the kicker, you know, has made 75 field goals in a row and then all of a sudden he misses six out of the next 10. Like all that, like the yips and all that, I'm surprised just because of those things, teams don't have somebody on staff at a very basic level just to get them get over that. Okay, I agree with a lot of what you said, but it now seems as if this can become a default. Uh, the, the mental depression, I love this. I, I, think the, I think the Washington football team is starting to get some things. Well, I mean, and, and they, they, by God, it, it took them long you, enough. You, that doesn't you, mean they're going to win. You, you know what, though? Like, it was bad enough for a long time. I, I will credit Dan Snyder, even though he's, he was a terrible owner, but he, he has, like, he, he was in trouble. I mean, he had to say, he had to do things, and he's reacted apparently accordingly. But I, I want to go back to what you were mentioning. I know, Craig, you have many other things, but th- this thing now, when you go into a slump, that's part of the game. You're going to have slumps. Right, but, you know, th- there's, a, a, yeah. there's a difference in, in what was said earlier about how it could – you know, because people abuse everything. Let's face it. Like, as soon as there's something that looks like it has a little bit of oh. uh, reward at the end, people abuse the hell out of it. So now everything's, you know, because of this or because of that, not just because of the actual issue. So, yeah, there might be some uh, athletes in the future that use the mental health card as a way to get out of doing something. But I think in this case, it's not like these guys are not speaking to press. These are just guys on the team. They're not in the – it's not media stuff. This no, is just, I think it's great that there's yeah. a door they can go open or knock on it or get an appointment and go talk. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, people need to do that. You would think that that's an obvious thing that everyone would do anyway, but a lot of people, it's like anything else. You're scared to admit something, especially when you're some high profile or not even but a professional athlete who's supposed to walk on water. Yep, so uh, Washington is uh, one of the uh, few trendsetters right now in uh, the National Football League as far as uh, addressing – 
I don't know why I can't speak today as far as addressing uh, mental health with their players. Uh, I meant to mention this a couple of weeks ago and just uh, kept getting pushed back, but uh, ESPN is back in the documentary game coming in 2022. The Captain, a six-part documentary on Derek Jeter. It will be from the producers of The Last Dance. Although I've already seen some folks who are saying this is not going to be nearly as in-depth and and whatnot as uh, The Last Dance was, probably because of Jeter's personality and how kind of you know closed off he is. Uh, Spike Lee will be the executive producer. Last Dance producers are on board as well. Uh, so that will be coming if- next year. ESPN film, six-part documentary, I, The Captain. Is he going to let people inside of his life the way it will be great if he does? Well, I mean, that's what Michael Jordan did. That's why I, I know it's good. That's what, so if he does that, yes. And you see Jeter but doing that. I can't, given the fact that what we know about Derek Jeter, you know, as far as, like, kind of the rumor mill goes, is that, I mean, look, he was a very driven guy. On I mean, he was, you know, very dedicated to the team. But off the field, here's what I know about Derek Jeter, is that – he has a pretty impressive roster. Yeah. I mean, he's got a roster. And okay. he's dates a lot of women. Yeah. And so that's what people are going to want to know. And that's his personal business. But I'm telling you right now, I'll be disappointed if I don't find out if the gift baskets are real or not. <laughs> yeah. That, that would be the good what? to know. The gift baskets. What do you mean? You don't know about the gift baskets? No, I guess okay, I Okay. So the rumor about Derek Jeter. And, and it's, it is rumor, and it's legendary rumor, is that because he was a man about New York City and a single guy, and he did what I think most athletes in his position should do. He didn't get married until he was absolutely run through every wild oat. Like, there were no more wild oats left. He was, that's, I'm getting married, and I'm marrying this swimsuit model, and she's the last one. I mean, that was his decision. But he, I mean, he didn't. What about the gift baskets? So the gift baskets were, when he was out on the town and he would entertain a young lady, when she would leave in the morning, she would get a gift basket. And? I'm very curious if that's like, true. Well, yeah, like, okay. just like her, okay. her You know, they would have gifts. different thing, you know? Th- th- you know, the New you York sure? Yankees and Derek Jeter, thank you for you, your service. You, you know a lot about go. him. Were you ever invited to go with him? No, I wish okay. I was. Right. Like, as much right. as I hate the New York Yankees as a Red Sox fan, I, I think Derek Jeter's one, one pretty Who awesome guy. Who would you guy. rather have been a life coach for, Derek Jeter or Tiger? Oh, Derek Jeter. Okay. I All mean, right. less drama with Derek right. Jeter. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, he apparently has addressed it before kind of in a non-answering way. Uh, he was asked about it, and he just kind of ignored it <laughs> as it was smart to do. Uh, the post when he was playing used to have all sorts of crazy stories about the, the gift baskets and the sign memorabilia and all of that. And he just, he pretty much doesn't comment. So mm-hmm. there are some who are already anticipating this to be a total bust because it's going to be boring and nothing like the last dance, even though those people are involved because it's Derek Jeter. So we will see that's going to come up next year. Six part series called the captain uh, from ESPN will be headed your way. Saw this from the transfer portal, uh, Texas linebacker, Iodeli Adeoye had uh, put his name in the transfer portal. He was uh, a big-time recruit. I think he was out of maybe Missouri or something like that when he was in high school. But a big Tom Herman signing and played last year, started a a bit, I believe, and uh, then announced he was going to be entering the transfer portal. Well, he has now withdrawn his name from the transfer portal. So Iodeli Adeoye either uh, got some really – you know, sweet conversation in with Steve Sarkeesian, or there weren't nearly as many people interested. So don't know know, that we'll find out, but he is now going back to Texas, so they have a linebacker back for next year. I don't have the time, nor do I care enough, but I would love to know a stat. Of the 4 million transfers, yes, or those who have entered the transfer portal, I would love to know which schools lead the way with the most leaving, and then on top of that, and it might be three, which schools end up getting someone to change their mind. I, I, I think Texas has I, had to do I this wonder too. If the tra- I wonder if the transfer portal is kind of like online dating where you put your profile up there and you think like, man, I'm going to get a whole bunch. And then you sit there and you wait and you wait and you wait bunch? and you wait. You know, I'm going to, people are going to be clicking on this. Wait, but what? And then, and then eventually you're like, but you can't oh. be a fake picture or a fake profile. If you're sure, an athlete, you, no, but, you, but, but the thing is, is that you, you put that up there. I mean, I'm just talking about just in gen- sure. the, the basic idea of it is somebody puts their dating profile up. there thinking like, this is it. My lines are in the water. I'm, I, I'm going to meet the one I love. And there's no touch. And then, and then eventually it's just, 
<laughs> you know, you send out like that's, that's message just, after message after message. Nobody responds. No, you know, I got to oh, feel. He, I don't. I think Texas might be doing a pretty good job of when a guy throws his oh, name yeah, yeah. into it. They're, they're, hey, wait a minute. But I'm, I'm, I'm just talking about in it. Like, there's so many transfers. There's got to be oh. people like just like there's people on you know whatever dot com that have been there for six years and have gone out on no dates. The NCAA or somebody and the coaches that maybe even uh, Todd Berry. They need to find out three or four stats. How many officially are in the transfer portal since last season ended until the fall starts in August? How many transferred? How many came back? And how many are sitting out there completely by themselves with nowhere to play? I would like to see a chart with three symbols on it. A green arrow up, which means you actually went up a level with your transfer. You, you went to a better school. Uh, a red arrow down means you actually went down from, let's say, Clemson to, like, Texas State or something. like, Or even SMU. Like, that's a step down okay. from Clemson. And then, um, I don't – what was the third symbol I was just thinking of? Lateral? Like, yeah. I, I forget. I actually had an idea in mind for that, and now I've completely blanked on it. They didn't transfer? Or they, they're, they're no, it wasn't up? that. It was something else. But, um, but anyways, yeah. So, you could kind of just tell, like, who's going up and who's going down because I would love to see the numbers of who has entered the transfer portal – and then gone to a lower situation. Now, it's worked for the former Baylor kids at Sam Houston. I mean, oh, they yeah. won a national title, and that, that's probably where they needed to be, the Eliasa Andersons and, and those guys. That's probably actually where they should have been to begin with. But I would be very curious to see how many people thought, I'm going to enter the transfer portal, and then Dale ended Bonner, up at a lesser Fairmont school. Fairmont State to Baylor in basketball. That's a, that's a, that's a green that's arrow. A green arrow. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I do think, like, and I think that's that should be the true intention of the transfer portal is to find – you're a college athlete. Mm -hmm. We know you're a college athlete, but you may be a college athlete here, but you can be a college athlete at a level down. And I think that's the good part about the transfer portal. That's why, and that's, that's where that should flourish. But I, I do think, you know, the, the thing that worries about it is like we've talked about at length is that now it's, it's so much more than that. Speaking of which, before yeah. Craig, you know, the NCAA, there's a story of Fran Fraschilla, one top 40 program. Coach told me last week that they will no longer recruit high school players but will live in the transfer portal. We're like the NBA. We can build through free agency or through the draft. We'll take the sure thing. That was a week ago. Yeah, I mean, and that's not all that surprising, I guess. You know, uh, why, why deal with that? Draw? You know, and that's the thing, too, is now you recruit these high school kids and they have four or five years to play for you. They have four or five years to decide they want to go in the transfer portal. And I know it's kind of the risky run with anybody, and even before these rules were passed, but now it's almost like – you know, it's so widely available that, uh, you know, players are almost expected to do it at some point. Yeah. And, I, and I don't think that's good. And, you know, one thing it's done, too, is it's made some guys fat and happy. Georgia, I don't know if you've noticed, but, you know, they have they sure have a hard time recruiting. Not. Uh, they've used the transfer portal to pick up a uh, – Four-star tight end from LSU, Eric Gilbert, who's a fantastic player. Uh, they've lost some guys, of course, as well, but they also picked up like a four-star corner from Clemson. They picked up like a five-star guy from here. And so the rich get richer, and, and some schools get richer too. But, uh, yeah, the transfer portal is definitely interesting. Of the players, and I know we're up against the top of the hour, and you might have one or two more stories. Siaka Ika is from LSU. That's, a, that's for Baylor. That's a gem. Uh, the, the offensive linemen from Buffalo, they were really good running the football. That's someone going up a level to a power five rather than a, a group of five. And there's a couple of others. They, they've done a pretty good job. I wonder if the transfer Drew portal. Drew Estrada going up. Drew Estrada, yeah, absolutely. I wonder if the transfer for portal for Baylor can help them not always be a part of that conversation or rarely a part of the conversation for four and five stars. Yeah, I just think there would be a lot of red arrows yeah. on that chart. And yep. uh, finally, uh, this is not so much off the radar, but I don't know that we're going to mention it. So uh, tonight, NHL, Tampa Bay, Carolina, game two. Lightning lead that series 1-0. There will be two games uh, tomorrow night, but only one game uh, tonight in the NHL. So uh, I've enjoyed the Stanley Cup playoffs immensely. And uh, I look forward to seeing Carolina the, and uh, Tampa how Bay. How about game the two. Maple Leafs? You're going to talk about this. The Go Maple right Leafs yep. just falling flat on their face up 3 1 over the Canadians. And Canadians. Canadians, sorry. Can yeah, I, Paul, get it right. Yeah. The, yeah, three down. They were down three games to one in hockey. And they came back. Clearly. The Canadians <laughs> beat Toronto. Well, yeah. I mean, that's a blood feud. Like that's that's they hadn't faced each other in the playoffs in in ages, and so this was a huge deal, mm -hmm. especially in Canada, where you know it's hockey night. And uh, yeah, for the Leafs to fall to the Habs, 
of all teams, but to do so with the 3-1 lead, that's devastating. Like, that's mm. crushing for that fan base. So, yeah, that's, that's a tough pill to swallow for sure. Okay, now, of the four major sports, which sport has had the least or the most amount of teams come back from three games to one down? In, in the playoffs, obviously, would not, that's the only time you'd I beat. would think baseball. Baseball, 14 times teams have come back from three games to none down, including one that was 3-0. In basketball, 13 times. Okay. In uh, hockey, 30 times. And then after that, that's, those are the three. Uh, is there another major? Of course, there's another. Uh, well, that's uh, the NFL. They don't have that. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. Would you want to play a three game series against the Craig's Patriots? over here telling me to bring in the no, left I'm side. Try, of the well, I'm trying to because right, it's 502. And then tonight in the NBA, a trio of games Boston and Brooklyn, 630 on TNT. Boston leads that series 3 1, so they can clinch a. Deciding game four, Portland and Denver, and uh, Lakers and Phoenix. That series tied at two. That'll be tonight at nine on TNT. When we 